This video is brought to you by Hoodbeast.com. Design your own custom hoodies. Hoodbeast.com. We are beast. Hello everybody, it's me Zach Lee and welcome back to SDC and today is a very, very special day. Why? Because I'm going to be joined by a very, very special guest. Somebody who was making headlines for all of the right and the wrong reasons at the same time. None other than Mr. Potato Head's long lost brother, LeVar Ball, come on down. All right, so LeVar, tell us something about yourself. I'm too big, too strong. Everybody. And I mean everybody knows by now what happened with LeVar Ball and this whole shoe ordeal. He was trying to land a deal for his sons with Nike, Under Armour, and Adidas. And it didn't go so well. You know, Nike's saying that LeVar Ball is the worst thing to happen to basketball in the past hundred years. Under Armour laughing at and kicking LeVar Ball out of the building as soon as he said how much he was going to charge for the shoes and that he wanted a billion dollars for the deal. And not too long after that though came the announcement of his son's first signature shoe, the Z02s which were being manufactured and distributed by none other than BBB, the big baller brand, LeVar Ball's brand starting at the low low price of only $495 but we all knew that that's stuff that everybody already knew so what's new what's going on here SDC we all know that LeVar Ball is all about the billion and that he wasn't going to take a penny less we didn't know though is that apparently after you get rejected asking for a billion dollars you don't lower your price no 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 what you do is you drive that price through the roof as that is what LeVar Ball did yesterday. He is now playing hardball or softball or no ball, air ball with the bigger shoe companies. As LeVar Ball is now asking for $3 billion from Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour if they want to be a part of his brand. Now that Lonzo's headed to Los Angeles, what they should have did is gave me a billion dollars and let me be on my way. Now that, that's unrealistic. They're yeah, not unrealistic to you. No, it's Now, you know what? If they want to come talk to me now, it just went up to $3 billion. Triple B's, billion, billion, but do you, billion. That's right, LeVar Ball has just changed the name of his brand from big baller brand BBB to billions, billions, Billions. Of course, this has already gotten a lot of coverage, and it's just one of those LeVar Ball claims. You know, he's gonna say he's gonna say stuff like this, and people are going to take it and run with it. All I'm gonna say is this though. You know what, LeVar? I hope that one day you do get your billions. Did you get your billions, 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 and billions upon billions? I really hope so. That would be a fantastic story. And I wish your son all the best in the upcoming draft and that he does go to LA. And that's all I gotta say. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Is this for real, bro? This is actually for real. This is actually going down. All I know is I'm about to be making some bands in lawsuits. Let me, let me think real quick. Let me think. What NBA players or teams do I feel have done me wrong? Got it, the Brooklyn Nets. Let me practice my lines real quick. <clears throat> yes, your honor. I feel that myself and many other Pistons fans around the world, many lifelong, die-hard, upstanding Detroit Pistons fans around the world have been emotionally abused by the Brooklyn Nets organization. The organization that wasn't supposed to win a single game this year at one but despite that despite the fact that they weren't supposed to win this year they beat my beloved Detroit Pistons not once but twice during the same year and one of those wins came at the buzzer and I just believe your honor Get some tears going and I just believe your honor that this is false advertisement at its finest and on top of that the level of traumatization that I have felt and been through knowing that my favorite team was beaten and abused by this organization not once, but twice. It's almost too much to bear. And despite, your honor, as traumatizing as this has been, all these sleepless nights, all these tears shed, I think that an easy settlement of one billion dollars would help me to ease the pain. That'll work. Bro, we got fans out here suing NBA players and teams for hurting other NBA players. Yes, that is right. All right, so this report came out yesterday entitled 
Spurs fans, Miles lawsuit against Zaza Pachulia and the Warriors. I read this and immediately expected it to be something similar to the Heat fan that I covered earlier in the year, who was suing the Heat and Eric Spolstra for imitating him or something crazy like that. But then I read the article and bro, this is actually legit. So apparently the story is a devoted, lifelong Spurs fan filed a lawsuit naming Zaza Pachulia and the Golden State Warriors as defendants, saying that when Zaza hurt Kawhi in game one, it devastated the quality of the Spurs chances of being competitive and diminished the value of the tickets that he had purchased. So basically he's suing Zaza because he hurt Kawhi and now the Spurs had no chance of winning. And the man suing even has an attorney and that's what got to me because that is insane. I know that typically attorneys are good attorneys wouldn't want to be anywhere near this case because they care about their win ratio. The more cases they win and the less case they lose means the more they can charge their clients because they're most likely going to win. And this case isn't winnable whatsoever. And then the fact that the plaintiff was also so sure of this case, he was going to get something that he was willing to hire an attorney is just crazy because he's complaining that the value of his tickets diminished, right? He spent this money for these tickets and now the value has been diminished. There's nothing you can do about that. I'm sorry for your loss. But then to turn around and have to pay an attorney to try and fight a case that you know you can't win is just beyond me. And I know this isn't one of those deals where the attorney would take his part out of the settlement because there ain't about to be no type of settlement. And the lawyer even came out to the press making a statement which I thought was insane too. All we're asking from the court is that this type of behavior that can and does cause serious injury to our team and those that love it not be allowed in San Antonio. What the heck did I just read? So first off, he just said that the Warriors shouldn't be allowed in San Antonio. That's already gonna cause all types of problems. Here. And actually upon reading that, the attorney said, our team implying that he is also a Spurs fan. So maybe, just maybe, the guy who was suing and the attorney are like good friends that are both Spurs fans who are both upset with Zaza and the Warriors and just like, you know what? You file a lawsuit and I'll be your lawyer for the low low. That's about the only logical explanation that I can see from this. And as for specifically what they're asking for though, they're only asking for $73,000 and that the Warriors and Zaza hurt no one else on their team. I mean, they also asked for a 14 day restraining order in which basically the, the Warriors wouldn't be allowed in San Antonio, but the judge had already, of course, overturned that. They said no. And that's basically all we have on this case right now. Like I said, it's crazy. But that being said, if they get any type of settlement whatsoever, you best to run Brooklyn Nets because I am coming for you. To trade the pick or not to trade the pick, that has always been the question. And newly retired NBA great Paul Pierce has just given us his opinion on what the Celtics must do with that number one draft pick they received courtesy of the Brooklyn Nets. And it's to trade it and try and win now. You trade the pick because Markel Fultz cannot help the Celtics get over the top. The window is now. You're a 50 win team. You are the number one seed. You have to build on this momentum. If you can acquire a Paul George, Jimmy Butler, or Gordon Hayward from Utah, you have to do it. There is a right answer to this whole trade the pick or not to trade the pick argument. But unfortunately, there will be no way to tell which is the right answer until maybe like five years down the road. And it is a really tough decision. And one that I think hinges upon how well the Celtics perform in this series against the Cavs. If they manage to keep some of the games close, a majority of the games close to where they are in striking distance, maybe even somehow pull out a win or two. Then yeah, I say, you know what? We are right there to if we had a Jimmy Butler or a Paul George or a Gordon Hayward and we get a good rebounder, we can take these guys. But if all the games were like the one last night, Will you get spanked in your own house? Then I say it might be best to keep the pick and see what Fultz can do. If he turns out to be that guy down the road and you traded him away for a chance to win a championship that you couldn't even win, then that would suck big time. And also, I know some people are thinking pairing IT with Fultz could be the answer, but it's not. I mean, Isaiah Thomas is already in his prime and needs to try and win now. And then Fultz is about to be a rookie who will need years in the league before he's seriously ready to compete. You know, it's gonna be a big summer for Boston, one way or another. And on a side note though, I do think it would be really cool if the Celts were able to build around Fultz 
and the Lakers were able to build around Lonzo if they get him. So you know we could have a Celtics Lakers rivalry once again in the NBA. And that could also bode pretty well for my Pistons too since anytime the Celtics and Lakers are good the Pistons aren't that far behind. So far in this video we talked about money. We've talked about suing teams and talked about the Celtics. It's a sign. Celtics fans, you guys might have a legit case on your hands against LeBron James and the Cavaliers here. You know, could end up in a huge payday if you play your cards right. You know, I'll even help you. Just say something along these lines. Your Honor, we as a Celtics fan base feel that we have been violated in our own home by the defendants. Your Honor, LeBron James and the Cavaliers got it in with both us and our twins last night knocked our frame loose with no regard for our well-being whatsoever. It was 48 minutes of pure agony, your honor, and we feel that we have the right to be compensated for our suffering. Yeah, that should work. You could tell that Cleveland was just waiting, just itching to get back on the court yesterday, and I don't think the Celtics were quite ready for it. I mean, 117 to 104 was the final score, but that score makes the game seem a bit closer than it actually was. I mean, the lead got as big as 26 at one point in the game. LeBron James picked up where he left off the first two series as he once again scored at least 30 points with 38 points, 9 rebounds, and 7 assists. And Kevin Love was also dialed in last night for 32 points and 12 rebounds. Isaiah Thomas and Jay Crowder each tallied 21 for Boston, and I expect them to play with a huge fire burning right under their butts in game two. And that's going to lead us to the question of the day. What do you think the Celtics should do? Trade the pick or keep it? I say keep it unless, of course, they prove that they are right there and able to beat the Cavaliers. I mean, because you already have Jalen Brown, you get Markel Fultz, and then you probably have the first pick of next year's draft too. That's already an amazing start. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below, but now let's take a look at what you guys said in yesterday's video. In yesterday, after it came out that Lonzo will most likely only be working out for the Lakers and the teams are trying to trade for D'Angelo Russell, I asked you guys whether the Lakers would select Lonzo with the number two pick and if they did, if that meant D'Angelo Russell would be traded. And you guys said this, Lakers should trade D'Angelo Russell for Jaleel Okafor. Lakers need a center, Six need a true point guard. Plus him and Simmons play at the same high school, which works out for both parties. Magic got a plan, draft Lonzo, move Russell to shooting guard. Lakers will have a shooting guard who can take over and has ice in his veins. Sound familiar? I am sure it does. Mamba! At the end of the season, D'Lo played shooting guard and was better than point guard D'Lo. He played shooting guard in college and they said they wanted to keep him as their future shooting guard. I think he will be a great shooting guard alongside Lonzo and a good backcourt. Uh, yeah, first off, I wouldn't trade D'Angelo Russell for Jaleel Okafor. Heck, I wouldn't trade him at all. I mean, he's a guy that if you put him as shooting guard, I feel he would be a lot better than he has been. And on top of that, if you do trade him, they would need to get another young shooting guard back to pair alongside Lonzo. And there aren't too many of those in the NBA right now that are available. So I do see the Lakers starting off their season with a backcourt of ball and Russell. Like I said, the leave your answers for today's question of the day down in the comment section below. But other than that, thank you once again for watching the video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on it and subscribe to stay up to date with everything that's going on in the NBA on a daily basis. And until tomorrow, keep getting the bucks, Team SDC, and I'm out of here. Peace!